uh, going to now uh, start discussing a brand new topic. So far, we've been discussing little data structures here and there, and uh, we've talked about lists, and the one that I've mostly talked about so far has been the array list. And we've also done a little bit work on arrays, which technically is a list, but doesn't really meet the interface definitions of a list in Java, right? J list is an interface. So the only list you really know right now is array list, and that's going to change today, where I'm going to show you another kind of list, which is called a linked list. Now, in order to sort of motivate why we need a linked list, last class we had a lecture, we talked about two new data structures, we talked about this thing called a stack, and we described the stack as a LIFO architecture where the last item in would be the first item out. But we also said that there was another possible data structure called a FIFO, and I referred to this having another name. I didn't call it a linked list. Who remembers what I called it? Yes, Mr. F, sorry? I called it a Q. Now, in Java, the stack is both considered to be uh, a, a, an actual library class, right? It's a library class. That means you can actually go stack s equals new stack, right? You can do that. And it's also an abstract data type, meaning that it is possible to build a stack using different types of data structures. You can build one using an array. You can build one using an array list. You can also build one using a linked list, which we haven't learned what that is, but it's entirely possible. Now, I don't know what the one in the library is built out of. I'm going to guess it's probably built out of an array, but we don't really care as a user of the stack. We just, we just use it, OK? Now, the queue, that's a different situation. The queue is only an interface in the Java library. So you can't go queue, queue equals new queue, because you can't use the keyword new with an interface. This is not a a, a, a real class. It's not a, it's not a concrete class. It turns out, though, that there is a concrete class that is essentially the same as the queue. Can anyone guess what that is? Yes, Mila? It's this class right here. And the link list is going to be Java's class version of this interface. And so what is it? Well, a queue or a linked list, and I'll be using the terms interchangeably a little bit, which is a little sloppy on my part, but it, it pretty much works. And unlike this stack, which you can think of as like a stack of dishes where you put a dish on top, and then next time you need a dish, you take the one off the top, right? So that will be last in, first out. The queue or the linked list is different. It's more like a line. So if you imagine someone here, lining up in a line, right? So I'll put their noses in so you can see what direction they're facing, right? So this would be the front of the queue. This is the back of the queue. If someone wants to join the queue, they would join from the back here. And then if the next person is to be served, they will be removed from the front of the queue. That makes sense, right? Okay, so the queue or the linked list is the data structure we're going to study now. So the queue, the queue is an interface. It's an abstract concept. It could be built using a linked list, but it, you could also build this using an array or an array list. It's entirely possible. Most of the time we build queues, we use these things, but we don't have to. We could build them out of other things. But we're going to build our queue using a linked list. And in fact, what we're going to do is now the link list I mentioned to you this is a concrete class in the Java library and because both the array list and the link list they both implement the list interface you can essentially use this class the exact same way as you use an array list now all the method calls are the same why are the method calls the same they don't inherit list miss they implement list list is an interface so we inherit from classes, we implement interfaces, but because they both implement the same interface, using them looks exactly the same in the code. And if that's the case, you might be wondering, well, why do we need two of them? It's because their underlying performance has completely different characteristics, and based on the application, sometimes it's better to use this, and sometimes it's better to use this. And we'll spend a good deal of time describing 
the differences between the two today. So what we're gonna talk about now is what is this link list idea and why is it so radical versus anything you've seen in computer science so far? Now in previous years, I tried to teach this at the beginning of the data structures course. It never went well, never went well. So I have waited now until we're almost in the middle of the course to introduce this topic because this topic has a subtopic in it that you've never seen before called a pointer. And this is the thing that is so difficult for you to understand because, well, your entire computer science life, all two years of it, you've never seen this before. And so that's the thing that's gonna be so hard to kind of get to understand and appreciate. But your ability to understand pointers and link lists is my single biggest goal in this course. It's my single biggest goal. By the time you leave here, you need to understand how these link lists and pointers work. Why? Because these pointers are not just used for link lists, they're used for graphs and trees and all kinds of other data structures. So understanding this subtopic in linked lists is extremely important for understanding data structures as a whole. Did you have a question? Yeah, does that differ from the pointer we talked about with the stack? Uh, yes, sir, that's very different. So in a stack, so Ben was asking, in a stack we had a pointer also. We were was pointing up here and then we had some data here. Then when we would pop from the stack, we would move this item and move the pointer down. In this case, the pointer for the stack was simply an index into the array. Here, we're talking about a memory address that points to another memory location. 